Hi and welcome to Phoenix TV, a show that brings you Manchester's fastest, most exciting sports team, the Manchester Phoenix. Got a bumper show for you this week because we've had a doubleheader home games. We'll show you what happened with uh, our game against Bracknell Bees uh, on the Saturday night. We'll preview the Swindon Wildcats game. We'll show you that game, player interviews and the post-match. And I've got Jake here with me to run through a few bits and pieces. Tambo, good afternoon. Hi. Well, before we talk about tonight's, let's have a look at what happened at the Bracknell game. Big shot from Backlick, he's blocked, comes back to Backlick again. Good stop by Annette with the left arm to Thompson. Berlin sets the puck down, feeds Thompson. Kovar, sharp angle, stops it in. Too much room, too much time for Robin Kovar. Little stick angle to put Tom Annette down and then sweeps it around the pad. Into the back of the net, it's a power play goal for the Phoenix. They take the lead, it's Manchester 1. Bracknell nil. Had a Ryan rebound picked up by Chamberlain and away come the Phoenix down the left hand side. It's Backlick taking the shot and scoring. Well, it's not how we usually see Frankie Backlick score. That one wasn't about power or placement at all. It's a soft one and it's right through the legs of Tom Annette. He'll want it back. The Phoenix double the lead. It's Manchester 2. Bracknell nil. Side. Gets it out towards Ben Wood, it just rolls through. Neil nicely sets up hand in the slot. He's Chamberlain, good stop by Annette, who was off balance but got the glove out in there. Chamberlain, nice pass, Thompson, first time feed. Archer left hand side into the zone. Cuts inside, shoots off the side of the goal. Neil will fire it up towards Hand, who finds Archer into the zone. Shooting good block from Tetlow, but bounces down in front. Ben he gets his pass away, not quite, but Chamberlain reaches in to win the loose puck. Kovar knocks it to his stick with his skate. The roll towards Chamberlain, shot and a good stop by the right pad of Tom. Swalski trying to backhand up the boards, then tries to go forehand. Kovar's intercepted it. Plays it towards Chamberlain in front, just tied up backhander from Thompson. It'll break and Kovar put it in. No, he can't. And then the second time of asking, Tom Annette gets something on it to keep it out. Neil. Hand. Curling. Berlin kicking it through. Archer is on to the puck, finds Kovar. Archer taking the shot, save made the next rebound back to Archer and Hand puts it in. All a bit dozy at the back really from Bracknell, it was a big rebound off the pads of Tom Annette and he looks at his D and says who was picking up Archer and more importantly who was picking up Tony Hand who steers it into the unguarded net to make it Manchester 3, Bracknell nil. Flips it through, Tetlow, four hands around the board, a behind pitcher to pick it up, plays it and Matt Ford skates onto it, again in the zone, Phoenix reaching in with the sticks, Ben Wood backhands around the balls, it'll be picked up by Turner, Watkins comes in to narrow down the angle, he flips it through towards Ford, chance in front was there behind pitcher, and kicks the puck through, switch towards net, tip comes in and they score, behind pitcher towards the net and Matt Ford stick on the ice, tips it through his own skates, and it's just squeaked through the pads of Declan Ryan. The shutout broken with 3.41 to go in the second. The Bees are on the board. It's Manchester 3, Bracknell 1. Ryan away from the Phoenix Backlick trying to stick handle his way through. He'll pick it up off the boards behind the goal. Tom Ralph does a good job forcing him wide. He can work it back to Berlin. Kovar towards Chamberlain. Sticks to Luton. He'll knock the puck away. Berlin sharp angle effort and it's in. Well, it's found a hole. Tom Annette's looked like he was tight on the post, but it's managed to work its way through. And on the final weekend of the season, Johan Berlin has finally scored a goal at the ice dome with 54 seconds left in the second period. It's Phoenix 4, Bracknell 1. Thompson are now hand into the zone on the left-hand side. Delaying. Thompson backhand off the side of the net. Archer trying to stop it in. It doesn't go. Hand top of the circle, gets it back, Ben Wood, lots of time, lots of room off the crossbar, beats the nets but it comes back down off the bar, Thompson, hand again, hand played across, lovely pass, Thompson in front and it's put wide by Chamberlain, had an open net, Bobby Chamberlain but misses, Backlick across the hand, 
with the sniffle onto it, and he plays a long pass down the ice. Phoenix are caught, breaking in shot, good stop, Declan Ryan. Tom Beasley tried to go glove side, but absolutely no way through. Pass finds Ford, it's off a skate, Backlick picks it up. He's got open ice, you know what that usually means, hook back, and that'll be a penalty. And Backlick takes down Tetlo for good measure. Hind pitcher is not amused because he doesn't think he hooked Frankie Backlick, but it certainly looked like it. From my perch at the back of block 11, Hind pitcher will be led away, but it's a Phoenix power play. Gives it for Hand, back to Robin Kova. Hand delaying, playing it down low. Kova, Thompson trying to tip it in. Come back to Thompson again. Good stop by Annette with the pad. Hand will settle the puck down. Backlick walks in, shoots and scores. <laughs> Nicely worked by the Phoenix. Frankie Backlick walks in off the point. And Tom Annette did not see that puck at all. Thompson parked in front, provides the screen. It's another power play goal for the Phoenix, and it's Manchester 5. Crackle 1. He come off the stick of Tom Ralph. Thompson gains his own. He's hit hard by Pavel Stritchek. Manages to shield the puck. It'll break through to hand behind the goal. Out from Archer. Good stop by Annette's rebound. Save again. Good stop from Tom Annette. And Archer sent barreling headfirst into the goal by Antonov. But two or three good stops in tight from Tom Annette on James Archer. For Robin Kovart, who holds off his man, and then back it through towards Hand. Kovar, lovely little move through his legs, playing it back, it's off the side of the net from Ben Wood. That time the net was knocked off, I think a little more deliberately. Berlin finds Hand, who back it through. Kovar shows Harvey Stead this way, that way, and curls away from Turner, setting up Berlin, walking in, shooting and scoring! You know what I'm going to say, and it involves buses. It's a second goal of the night from Johan Berlin, who has scored at the Ice Dome twice now, we can say. And with 27 seconds left, it's Manchester 6, Bracknell 1. Look at the head of the linesman. Neil across to Ben Wood. Back to Neil in the corner. Spittle towards the net. That will do it for the game. Well, the Bees will conclude their away games for the season with a valiant effort, but unfortunately, pretty outclassed, it has to be said. The Phoenix will conclude their regular season on home ice tomorrow night against Swindon. But tonight, they get the two points and two goals from Johan Berlin. The final score is Manchester Phoenix 6, Bracknellbees 1. Phoenix TV here, our penultimate home game of the regular season with a 6-1 win over Bracknell Bees. I'm here with, uh, I'm going to call him a veteran, even though he's only 31 years old. Thank you. Tony being old enough to be your dad. You. Matt Tawalski, hi Matt. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, it's tough, you're very, very short bench, you know, an awful lot of youngsters out there tonight, been a long, long, hard season for you. Uh, yeah, 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 we, did, we don't have a short bench, we just have a, an awful lot of kids, but, um, you know, they've been shoved into the deep end and, you know, they played their hearts out and they've been playing their hearts out for, well, since Christmas now, since, since, since the situation has, you know, arisen. Uh, yeah, it, it's, it's difficult, it's obviously with youngsters, they, they, they thrive on momentum and winning, not been going your way a lot at the times this season, but they're stuck at it. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've been awfully close, awfully close. I mean, we we've uh, we lost to Telford like three two, and then we even took them to uh, overtime loss. And there's been a few games where we're, where, where you know there's been like the one goal difference, but they're they're the margins that just haven't you know clicked with with us, you know. And it it's, it hurts us. It hurts us, you know. It hurts the kids. It hurts, it hurts the the veterans as I have, you know. <laughs> you know, we are looking at. We've got one more game. We're going to try and win that tomorrow, and hopefully finish. On, on, on a high. Phoenix TV here again uh, with uh, our man of the match, defender and goal scorer tonight, Johan Berlin. Johan, two goals, two cracking goals. Yeah, I, was, uh, I wasn't really aiming. I got good passes, so uh, it was just to put it in. Yeah, it's still got to be put in, though. Well, anyone could have done that. A lot of time on the ice tonight for the D-men. I mean, OK, Bracknell didn't really pressure too much, but uh, 
a lot of ice time for you, you, you D-men guys tonight. Yeah, we were only three Ds. Uh, we have a short bench. Everybody knows that. So it's, it's tough. Like, uh, we just, just being on the ice takes energy from you, really. So uh, we're just trying to play smart. I don't know how well we do it because I don't, I don't think Bracknell came out really hard. So it wasn't that bad. No, well, see, it was, uh, it was nice to get the sort of game after the disappointment on Thursday. And we, we're gearing up now, get, get the wins, get the confidence ready for Basingstoke next week. Yeah, we're trying to, uh, to get some good habits in there and uh, basically trying to, trying to do the, the little things right and uh, just, uh, just uh, trying to skate, basically being on the ice and just be, being comfortable with what's coming. Well, that's that. OK, Jake Bracknell last night. It was men against boys, really, wasn't it? Yeah, I mean, um, Bracknell have been famed for quite a long time for, for playing their kids. Uh, and to say we were short benched last night, I think we had 11 skaters in total. We totally, totally outmatched them. Uh, with no disrespect to them, you know, they've got some good kids. We spoke about it last week. Ilya Antonov's uh, a good one. I can't remember his name uh, now, shame on me. War number 19 last night, worked his socks off. The, the, you know, they worked very hard, but as you say, it was men against boys last night and we looked good. Well, I, I did an interview with uh, Matt Towalski and I think one of the main problems is that there was a senior guy, Matt, a senior guy, Matt Ford, with two of the youngsters and no real direction they, you know missing Galazzi and Spearing to keep the guys moving tell them what they're doing right tell them what they're doing wrong I think that's maybe what happened last night yeah definitely organisation's a huge part of it um, talented hockey players is one thing but if they're all just going about it in any which way direction uh, you, you know you're not going to win games you've got to be organised you've got to be galvanised you've got to have a game plan and it didn't really look like they had one last night. Like you said, there was a lack of organisation uh, across the lines, uh, and we benefited from that. We looked well drilled, uh, we worked hard, we beat them to every puck in the corner, and, yeah, and you know, the scoreline reflected that. Yeah, I think so, and we scored some good goals, and Johan had two, got two crackers, uh, seemed to enjoy himself last night. Yeah, definitely, I think um, he, he looked like he'd been let off a chain a little bit last night. He enjoyed himself, like you said, uh, and I don't think he scored a goal at home in the league, certainly all season. And then, as you say, he goes and bags two, two crackers and got an assist on the first goal. So hopefully, we see the same from him again tonight. Well, we certainly need it for the next three games. I mean, tonight, well, I don't know. Swindon need the win because they want to actually have Peterborough at home in the second leg. So they have to win and hope that uh, Milton Keynes will do something there. But I really can't see it because uh, Milton Keynes have only got to gear up for next week for the games against Guildford. Sure, yeah. Um, I, I mean, of course, last night our win over the Bees and Basingstoke's win confirmed that we get each other in the playoffs now and the seeds mean that we'll play at home first and away second. Uh, but I think tonight is important for us that we keep the train rolling. We played well last night. We were very, very short benched. I know that, but the guys need to stay focused, I think. I think if we take our foot off tonight and go, it doesn't really matter, we might lose focus going into next week and that's, that's not something we need to do. Well, I can't see them doing it. I mean, Phoney, who took that uh, puck to the throat on Thursday night, I asked him who he was playing. He says, yeah, I've got to get my playoff head on, so which is why Phoney's going to play tonight. Yeah, I should, I should hope so. I mean, we've seen it time and time again for the last four or five years. Stephen Phone is the playoff netminder. He's absolutely outstanding in the, in the big games, and he gets it done in the regular season. But that said, I thought Deck had a good game last night. Yes, he did. Right, well, that's Bracknell done to death, a good win. Tonight, Swindon, as you say, have they got anything to play for? Will they be going all out? It's difficult to call this one. We'll have to wait and just see how it shapes out. They'll want a bit of revenge after that hammering we gave them in the cup. They won't want that to happen again. No, and of course, we went to them in the league a couple of days after we'd confirmed it, um, our place in the cup final. And, you know, they beat us by two or three, I think. But that's because we'd done our damage in the, in the games that we really wanted to do the damage in. Tonight will be interesting, definitely. Um, it might be a bit of a damp squib. It might be both teams going, we're in playoff hockey mode, and both teams going hell for leather. But like you say, it's almost impossible to call. We'll just have to wait and see. Right, well, before we wrap this one up and uh, and uh, move on to other things, the playoff matchups. I mean, Telford against Steel Dogs. I cannot, in my wildest dreams, see the Steel Dogs uh, pulling anything off here. As much as we'd like to. Uh, you know, it's not often that we wish Sheffield to win, but this, I think, would probably be, be, be one of them. But no, um, 
you know, on their night, they're a good team, but Telford have shown time and time again this season that they've just got too much for, for, for Sheffield. Guildford, Milton Keynes. Now, under normal circumstances, Milton Keynes are a playoff team, and I would think they might be able to do something, but there's a, certainly a spark missing with them this year, and I think Guildford would probably have too much depth for them. Yeah, uh, Milton Keynes have been missing something this year. You know, they've had a similar year to ourselves uh, in that they've, um, you know, not performed po possibly as well as they might have liked. Uh, normally a playoff team, but like you say, they're, they're missing something, and Guildford, I think, have hit a bit of a purple patch towards the end of the season. Uh, I, th I, you know, I, th I see Guildford going through to Coventry. Peterborough Swindon. Well, I've looked at the head-to-head -head before we come upstairs, and uh, Swindon won twice at Peterborough. Peterborough won twice at Swindon. So that one is just too hard to call. I think if Peterborough get the second leg at home, I think they might just edge it. But by geez, that's a close one as well. Yeah, uh, really, really tough to call. Um, but I've liked Peterborough this year. Um, I know you're famed for, for calling their kamikaze hockey, but it's, there's been none of that this year. I agree. They, they've been solid at the back, good going forward. They recruited well over summer. I don't think they've made many changes uh, throughout the year. And, of course, we all know here in Manchester, Slava knows what he's doing. I think I'm going to tip Peterborough to go through on that one. Well, that leaves our big one, which we'll talk more about next week, obviously. But... Uh I think we can do Beijing so I really, really do. But the unfortunate thing is, when you get this, a good team's not going to be at Coventry. That's it. I mean, and we said that at the top of the season. Um, four or five games in, it was clear that some, the, a couple of good teams are going to miss out on the playoff finals weekend. Um, I think us and Beijing Stoke in the playoff quarterfinals is without doubt the pick of the bunch. Um, it's, it's happened time and time again this season. It's been tight and close. I think on the rare occasion, it's been won by more than one goal, but it's you know it's too too close to call, but I think we can do them. Well, there you go. My four, Telford, Guildford, Peterborough, and us. And I'm bringing us both up a big piece of humble pie from Margaret next week. Absolutely. Um, I think it might be a Phoenix TV first, but I think I agree with your four there, Tambo. Um, I'd love to see us in Coventry. Um, if we get there, I don't care who we play. Hobart wins it. Neil walking in, shooting good stop. Stevie Lyle right under the chin. He gloves it. And we'll hold on for a whistle. Left hand side. Dickinson fires it round the boards. Walker curling on his edge. He's not able to pick it up. Swindon will retreat. He's back it. Nicely reels it in, back it in. Lyle went to play, he's dropped his stick. Chamberlain trying to get it away from Buglesey, couldn't quite do it. Thompson towards Backlick in front and he scores! And this time Frankie Backlick, with a reminder to last night, makes absolutely sure to show Steve Brown that he definitely got that one. Lyle losing his stick, the Wildcats did not recover. Nice pass from Thompson, and Bakalik tips it in. It's Phoenix 1, Wildcats nil. Shane Moore fairly save the officials, and that will allow Adam Harding to pick it up. Bring it away out of the corner. Put the break into the zone, poor change by Whitfield. Kovar couldn't quite settle it down. He'll go all the way around the net and score! change at the back by Swindon and Robin Kovar outweights Stevie Lyle who couldn't get back up in time it's a wraparound to save her for Robin Kovar two quick goals and it's Manchester 2 Swindon nil. Trying to sweep it through towards Hand Harding knocks it down and put it caught in his skates but manages to get it away Whitfield can skate it down the ice of Swindon gets it across to Malazinski and shoots looking for Tip Watkins gets in the way can he get the puck away? Yes, he can. He finds Ben Wood left hand side. Nice pass to hit Walker and stride. Kovar driving in. Walker towards the net. Good stop by Lyle with the left arm. Tipping it through towards Hand. Played ahead by the Wildcats to find Nell into the zone. Malasinski goes back door. Shot from Nell. He's wide the far post. Who will keep it alive? He finds Nell. Bit of room in the corner towards Malasinski who scores. Phoenix caught asleep at the back as Jonas Hoop kept the puck alive. It's a lovely pass from Aaron Nell. And Thomas Malazinski puts it up over the glove of foam. Nothing that the Phoenix net miner can do about that one. And the deficit's hard. It's Manchester 2, Swindon 1. Gates it away. Down the left wing. Maud as well to knock the puck loose. Banks it up the boards. Phoenix will be caught short at the back. Who in gets it across. Shot from Nell and he scores. 
Bullis and Backlick, the traffic in front of Stephen Foden, couldn't see that shot at all. It's a nicely worked three-man break from the Wildcats, and just like that, the scores are tied. It's Manchester 2, Swindon 2. To set a nice play from Douglas to tip the cup through. And Whitfield can play it left-hand side. It's been broken into the zone. Floyd Taylor praying it across. Nelly's open and scores again. Jack Watkins showing how you don't play a two-on-one as he went right to the puck carrier. And Floyd Taylor duly obliged with the pass across. Nell has the freedom of the zone and puts it past Stephen Foe to turn the game round for Swindon. It's Phoenix two, Wildcats three. Moore can play a long pass down the ice. Hoog into the zone, trying to cut inside James Neal. Backhand, it's in between the pads of Stephen Foe who will get the glove down and freeze it for a whistle. CNI Solutions, keeping your computer network infrastructure beating. Because if it stops, so does your business. We provide many unique ways of keeping your network running at its full potential. Ensuring your company never misses a beat. CNI Solutions, keeping your computer network infrastructure beating. Your old car, seen better days, given up the ghost? You need the friendly guys at Davidson's. One phone call is all you need. They'll collect your car for free, sort out that nasty paperwork, and transform your old banger into lots of lovely cash. Because Davidson's are extremely reputable and recommended by the DVLA. So for the best prices, cash on the spot, and to scrap your car with confidence, call us on 0161 928 9981. Davidson's, we're talking scrap. Here at CW Motors, we provide a large range of high quality services. Your vehicle will be looked after by our highly qualified and dedicated team using both state of the art technology and good old fashioned elbow grease. We specialise in accident crash repair, mechanical and bodywork, and MOT preparation. We also have oven and jig facilities and can provide insurance estimates. So, for a friendly and professional service, come and see us at Victoria Mill, Droylston. Or you can call us on 0161 371 9983. It's alive by Swindon, but Walker's back there for Phoenix. Neil picks it up off the ball and finds Frankie Vakalik, who comes to the middle. Craig with it back, shooting the same play by Lyle. Kovar knocking it down, trying to go near post. Vakalik will circle the net, trying to stop it in Lyle down on the ice. Phoenix unable to get on to the loose puck. Swiss it in. Berlin gets it away to Kovar. He turns and then builds up some speed. Little head fake inside Jonas Hook. Carries into the zone. All the way around the net he goes. Still got it, Robin Kovar gets it back. Berlin from the point. Looking for a tip. It comes in from Dickinson. It's a good stop by Stevie Lyle. Now Walker. It's a hand. Kovar drops the puck back for Bakalik, who in turn drops it for hand. Bakalik towards the net. Back door and they score! Adam Walker. Lovely power play work by the Phoenix down the right hand side. And an inch perfect pass to the back door. Walker taps it through the pads of Stevie Lyle. It's a power play goal for the Phoenix and it's Manchester 3. Swindon 3. Walker was trying to stop it, it comes back to Adam Walker, who backhands it through for Bakalik again, towards Kovar in front, it hits the skate of Harding, Kovar nicely reaching in, Bakalik walking in, shooting and scoring! You cannot give Frankie Bakalik that much room down low, he walks in to generate the angle, and rips it tippy top corner, past Stevie Lyle, it's two quick goals for the Phoenix, and they've turned it round again, Manchester four, Swindon three. Draws the puck back, back lip is well tied up. Berlin gets it across for Wood. Rims it round the boards. Lyle out of the net. Blaze it around Costle. Try to scoop it clear. It hops past Ben Wood and away comes Sam Bullis. Nice little move to get inside Berlin. Waiting, shooting off the post. And Ben Wood can clear the rebound away from Aaron Nelt. Force wide by Hoog. Dispossessed Swindle bring it in. 2 on 1 down low. Malzinski keeping off the crossbar this time. 
Walker chops it away. Concise pass, a good one to find Chamberlain. Skating his way into the zone, sharp angle effort. Open one for Lyle, but he will hold on. Poor whistle. Just slow things down for Phoenix, playing it back for Ben Wood. Who will and turn. Slow things down, give it to Robin Kova. Back for Wood. The left hand side is completely fans on his pass. Swindon looking to turn it over. Berlin reaching in, it'll come through towards the back door. Bullets didn't get a shot away. Hook flip through towards Harding. Berlin ties up his man. Harding trying to walk it out front. Hook is loose. Costal turning, shooting off the post. Comes back to Costal again. He plays it down low towards Bullis. Who shoots and scores. Stefo looking pass all the way. The Phoenix in a right mess at the back after Ben Wood couldn't get the zone clear. And Sam Bullis surprises the netminder with a shot that goes right through his pads and in at the far post. Six seconds left in the period, and it's Manchester 4, Swindon 4. OK, so you have a great company, you provide a great service, you have a great team. What you really need is more customers. How do you get the message out there? How do you let people know just how great you are? How do you decide how you get noticed? How do you decide which platform? The Phoenix Premier Business Club offers you the complete package, helping you connect to the right people, providing you with the right audience over all the marketing platforms. As a member of the Phoenix Premier Business Club, you'll be able to effectively network bringing together fellow businesses through trust and relationship building, helping companies become walking, talking advertisements for one another. Video as a platform encompasses a greater persuasive effectiveness than many other communication tools. It sells a product or service using sight, sound and, more importantly, emotion. The Phoenix Premier Business Club will capture, produce and edit video marketing modules for you. Focus your online message and presence. The Phoenix Premier Business Club provides your company with a central communication and promotional hub. Engage your customers, stand out from your competitors. Offering genuine incentives, the Phoenix Premier Business Club will offer you two exciting purchasing incentives, whether it's B2Cs or B2Bs. Your customers' recommendations are still the number one way to gain more business. The Phoenix Premier Business Club will assist you in building a recommendation hub, providing potential customers confidence in you and your service or products. Get your happy customers to sell for you. Be a part of this great business opportunity. Be a part of the Phoenix Premier Business Club. Plays it down the boards, Bullis tips it through, Costal will race in after it. Phoenix slow to get back, chance at the back door and Nell fans on it. Had most of the net to shoot at but shanks it up over the crossbar. So Backlick walking towards the front of the net, instead Backlick sweeps it through. Neil playing it towards the front of the net. It's bouncing down, it comes off the back of the helmet of Lyle Kovar trying to shovel it in. And Stevie Lyle gets down to keep it out. Kovar flipping the puck ahead, Thompson knocks it down. He'll have to stop as Richardson got back well. He shoots it off the glove of Lyle. Pass comes off the back of the skate of Backlick. Loris Taylor will get onto it into the zone. Nice little move past hand. Sharp angle effort, it trickles in. Steve Foam got a piece of it. It was a weak, sharp angle effort from our Loris Taylor. But it has trickled through and into the back of the Phoenix net. And Swindon are back ahead again. It's Manchester 4, Swindon 5. Well, knock it down. It'll go all the way around, though. And who can get onto it? Nice cross ice pass. Finds Nell, who's got Malasinski going back over. Good stop by Foam. Got it crossed with the left pad. Phoenix keep it alive. Now they'll work it down low. Walker towards Backlick. He works it through for Kovar. Coming out from his backhand and scores! Great cycling round the zone from the Phoenix. And Robin Kovar holds off his man, scoops it past Stevie Lyle. And we're all tied again. It's Manchester 5. Swindon 5. Face off one by the Phoenix. Berlin trying to dump it into the zone, he forces it through. 
reaching in as an archer. Ham picks up in the Phoenix zone. Early carry from behind the Phoenix net. Across he goes to the hand. Fires it down on Stevie Lyle. Big rebound. Walker scores! The long dump in from Tony Hamm. An awkward rebound off Stevie Lyle. And Adam Walker goes top shelf with 26 seconds to go. The Phoenix leads Swindon by six goals to five. Thompson by the puck along the board to the Manchester Phoenix will go in. It was tight, it was tense, but in the end it's the goal from Adam Walker with 26 seconds left that will get the Manchester Phoenix the victory. Four points on the board to finish the regular season and it's the Basingstoke Bison next week for the right to go to Coventry. Final score is Manchester Phoenix 6, Swindon Wildcats 5. Phoenix TV after our Sunday game, our double header, where we beat the Swindon Wildcats 6 5. A bit of a goal fest. I'm here with our uh, man of the match, Adam Walker. Adam, it was uh, run and gun all night there tonight. Aye, ah, yeah, yeah. it was. It was a bit run and gun, yeah. It was. Uh, it seemed like it was a bit end to end. And I think, um, I mean, from our point of view, we didn't really we didn't play that well defensively. You know, they, they threw a few spanner in the works, and, you know, it was, it was a high scoring game, but we, were, we did well to come out with a win. It's really tough for the D at the moment, though. I mean, with them being so short, it's it's hard work. Guys coming back, playing out of position, and you come up against uh, people like Hoog and Nell. And it's, it's it's a real tough tough ask. Yeah, that's right. I mean, they've had to hammer down and and you know get through it, and you know you know fight through getting nailed, and it was it's, it's not easy for them. But you know they've done a good job, and you know hopefully we can get some more bodies back uh, for next week and uh, make a run at the playoffs. Well, we're going into it with a bit of momentum. I mean, two wins over at home. Nice to get, it uh, lifts, lifts the spirits a bit, guys coming back and uh, turn our thoughts to, to Basingstoke, which is going to be a tough one. Yeah, it is, it is. I mean, it's, Basingstoke are a good team and, you know, they, they bring a lot to the, to the table. So, you know, we have to really um, focus on our game. And, you know, as you saw out there, uh, you know, we, uh, we managed to get better confidence within the team and, you know, scored a few goals and hopefully that'll be good for us at the weekend. And yourself, two goals tonight. Nice to get them, isn't it? Always, I always don't mind scoring a goal. <laughs> All right, well, all the best, Adam. Uh, let's uh, get a, bit, a bit of rest, a bit of hard work, and uh, home on Saturday and try and get ourselves a bit of a lead. Yeah, that'd be nice. That'd be nice. Thanks, Adam. Thanks, Adam. Right, Phoenix TV, at the end of a long weekend for all of us, players included. Coming out with a 6 5 win over the Swindon Wildcats tonight. And we're here with Jared Dickinson. Hi, Jared. Hi, Tambo. And Jake. Good evening. Jared, nice to get a four point weekend. I mean, OK, end of the season, not a lot at stake, but give us momentum into next week. Yeah, definitely. It's been a while since we had a four-point weekend. Gives the lads confidence, especially after three games in a short space of time. And it's very tiring and exhausting, really. So to get four points is really good. And no travelling. Oh, that's even better, yeah. Telford's not far, so um, two home games is even better. Yeah. Jared, short benched uh, at the moment, which gives yourself more and more ice time as the games uh, come across. How do you feel? going into the playoffs you know yeah you've come with us for the last uh, last couple down in Coventry big chance for yourself this yeah the more ice time gives you a lot more confidence in case Tony does give you the call so ho hopefully if he does then I'll be ready now one of the things that I can't remember it was a uh, few shifts you had said god he's a lot stronger than he looks is what they were saying about you I don't think I was <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't me yeah definitely not somebody wearing your number potentially yeah well yeah it's been a hard season, hard season with injuries. I mean, tonight, the D, it was really tough for them. They seem coming up against top quality forwards and they're really, they're, they're, they're breaking their backs here. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Yesterday with um, Bracknell, there was 3D and obviously it was, wasn't as hard with uh, Bracknell having short numbers and cages. So they had a bit of a tough game then and then to go 4D against Swindon with a tough offence then, it's really tough for them, yeah. How is the mood going into the playoffs now, Gary? That's it. Regular season is over and done with on the back of a four point weekend, as we say. Uh, focused, do we feel good going into the playoffs? Yeah, really good. Um, emotions are high, ready to, raring to go. So 
hopefully we'll beat uh, Basingstoke and get into the playoffs. Love it. In a way, apart from Telford, it didn't really matter who we played. These, these other three matchups all look could go at, could go anyway. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Anyway, Telford are obviously up there and quite well undefeatable, really, I suppose. And everyone else is on the day can win. So, well, we'll just have to beat them in Coventry. Not oh, easy. In the final, there you go. We've heard it. Phoenix Telford in the final at Coventry. I'd love that. Jared, thanks very much, mate. Uh, bit of rest, bit more training, and off we go to Basingstoke. Yeah, definitely. Can't wait. Cheers, then. Looking forward to it. Right, that's it. After a bumper weekend, two home games, no travel, a four-point weekend, and uh, we roll on to the playoffs. Our playoff game next week is on Saturday against the Basingstoke Bison, and that will be with a 7 o'clock face-off. So that's Saturday for the first leg against Basingstoke, 7 o'clock face-off. Don't forget, you can follow the club. You can follow them on Phoenix TV if you want. The podcast, Twitter. What else is there? Oh, everything. Facebook and the local media tend to be giving us a fair old bit at the moment. So until next week, have a good week and then let's roll to the playoffs.